Hi and welcome to another Camera Carl tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to look at this panorama and how to turn it into something which looks a little bit more professional and to actually make a postcard image for this, for this photo. This photo is taken in Perth, Western Australia, my hometown. Originally it's a panoramic stitch of about seven photos and the image as it stands once cropped is about 65 megapixels. And what I've done, I've reduced that severely for this tutorial, so it's now about 2,000 pixels wide. So what am I going to, what's my aim today? Well, my aim is to take this photo and to turn it into this. As you can see, we've added a nice frame, but one of the things I really want to show you is the sky. This is how the sky looked in the original image. This is how the sky looks now. Now most professional landscape photographers will use something called a natural density, or neutral density I should say, a neutral density gradational filter, or an ND grad filter. ND grad filters look like this, and they essentially block light from one part and gradually increase the amount of light that can pass through until all light that enters the lens can pass through. They are oblong in shape, and the reason for that is so you can change where the, trans the transition occurs in your photo. Use a special mount on your lens and that just screws into the, the filter thread of your lens and you get one for all different lens sizes. And you just slide your grad filter in. You can align the transition on the grad filter to your horizon. You can rotate um, the whole lens assembly so if you rotate your camera you can rotate the, length, the, the filter direction independently. You can also get soft and hard transitions. This one's quite soft. There's a gradation from the, the dark through to the light, but you can get ones which actually have a, quite a sharp transition. So they're called hard and soft transitional P-series lenses, uh, filters. So let's get started. Here's our image. First things first, I want to crop it. I think the person standing in the corner is a bit of a distraction. <clears throat> Secondly, the composition's okay. Sky's a little bit bright. There's a bit of variation contrast here. I feel this tree in this area here is a bit too much in shade. So I could use the dodge and burn tools on this layer, but then I have the, the possibility of making mistakes and I can't really, once I've saved the image, I can't go back and make changes easily. So I'm just going to use another little trick where we use an overlay layer and that overlay layer we fill with 50% grey. So you can see it's now filled with 50% grey. If I just switch the overlay on its own and you can see if I switch this adjustment layer on and off, nothing happens to the image and that's the way the overlay blend mode works. Um, so, how do we brighten this image? We select white, or a light grey if you don't want to be overpowering. We select a suitable brush. So there's a suitable brush. And we then literally just paint over the areas we want brightened. In this case, just for foliage. Now, I'm not doing anything on the original image. This is all on the adjustment layer or this overlay layer that I've just created. So, there's my original image, there's my enhanced image. And I think that just adds a little bit more punch to, um, to the scene. Okay, next we want to apply this neutral density grad filter and to do that we simply create another layer I'm just going to place it below the, adjust, the second first adjustment layer we created we reset our colors to black and white we then select the gradation tool and we make sure that we have black through to transparent selected. 
And then, holding down the shift key, because we want a perfectly horizontal gradation, I simply have my layer selected, which I need to make an overlay, and then hold down shift, just drag halfway down, and voila, there is a graduated sky. And you can see much more punch has been added to that picture just through that simple routine. If you feel that too much punch has been added, you can lower the opacity ever so slightly. So here's our starting image, and that's our final image. Now finally, we want to add a bit of a border, and if you've gone to a previous tutorial of mine, you will see some actions I created. These actions create either a three pixel border completely around the image or just at the bottom of the image based on the background color. It's important that you do have a background layer. If you don't have a background layer, let me just remove that background layer. If you don't have a background layer, you, go, you select an existing layer, go layer, new, background from layer to turn it into a background. And then, it's a simple matter, I want to set the background colour to black, select my border, click play, and each time I add play, a three pixel border is being applied to my image. I'm just going to have a white border, and then go back to black. I'm going to click this a few times, and each time I click it, the border expands. Then I'm just going to add to the bottom. So if you can see now the left, right and top borders are staying the same side but the image is getting um, a thicker border at the bottom. And this is where I want to place my text. So I'm almost done. A few more clicks. Okay, I think that does it. Can close my actions now. And these actions are available on my website at cameracarl.com. Then I just need to write some text. I have the text centered. And I arrange it where I want roughly vertically. Then I select my text layer and my background layer and I align the two horizontally. And there you have it. We've turned a relatively average panoramic stitch into something that has a lot more punch to it and typical of the sort of things you'll find in the, in the postcard racks at your local tourist um, shop. That's all for now. Hope you found this tutorial interesting and hopefully I'll have some more up on the website and on YouTube very soon. So until then, have fun. <laughs>